Hi, and welcome to the 10 pence arcade video on how to debuzz a Vectrex. Now I've done some of these recently and I noticed there wasn't a lot of videos on how to do this. This is doing it with a, a very small amp, uh, which costs about a pound, uh, rather than the, the buzz off kit you can buy. The buzz off kit I recommend to anyone who can't use a soldering iron properly or is a bit scared to go in the back of a Vectrex. They're an absolutely excellent kit and well worth the money if you don't know what you're doing. But I do, and hopefully I can give some of my knowledge out to you people around there who can use a soldering iron properly, and uh, we'll get into it. So if I just turn the Vectrex on, you can hear the buzz. This is standard on a Vectrex. Now that buzz, you can read about this. It is a very common thing on Vectrexes. There were there was a cost cutting thing, and they didn't use shielded cabling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, we're going to change that. So first things first, I'm going to uh, get the amp ready because uh, you need to quickly just desolder a little wire link on it. It's a zero ohms resistor, which is basically a wire link. It's tiny, and it takes two seconds to get it off. So we'll just do that first. Now this is the little LM386 amp uh, unit. That there is the actual amp LM386. It comes in different packages, but this is a tiny little package. There's a volume control, uh, inputs and outputs, and speakers, some various bits. The bit we need to remove is this resistor here, zero resistor R1. So I'm just gonna clamp that up and get rid of it. And we'll solder an iron. Dun, 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 dun. It's fairly hot. I'm just going to just touch it on that R1 resistor. You just see it come off, hopefully. Okay, let's move in, see. There you go, it's off. Ta da! That's easy enough. And this is prepared to be fitted into the Vectrex. We're now going to take the Vectrex back off. I'll show you where all the screws are, and we'll get into it. Now we've got five main screws in the back of the back truck, so I've already taken them out just to make the video look a bit better. There's one in here, one in the back there, one on the right hand side as you're looking at the back of it, and one a bit higher up on the left hand side, and one sneaky one right down by the power flex at the back. So you take all those out, fairly longish screwdriver, skinny one, just lift it straight up in the air so you don't hurt the neck board. Off it pops, you've got a Vectrex inside. So I've taken a few wires off here. Normally they're all attached, don't worry about that. Um, now people are a bit scared of the inside of a Vectrex. There's nothing to be scared of really. The only scary bit can be that bit there, which is the anode cap. Now that's uh, sort of a black looking thing. The black wire goes into the main box there with my power board. The voltages come through there and go into the tube. Um, so that's a scary bit of a TV set basically. Don't touch that, simple as that. Don't touch the neck board because it's quite fragile. You break the, the glass on that things knackered you have to get a new tube so just keep your fingers away from that you can wear some uh, latex gloves if you want won't do any harm probably help you if you ever touch anything that was maybe had a charge in the capacitor or whatever but i don't think there's going to be any so first things first is to unplug a few things off the, off the board now the main one we're going to be unplugging is down inside here in the back of it um, and that is basically i took it out earlier is this black wire with a white cable on it now this is a fairly newish um, production vectrex and it's got a little little connector on there which is in the back very close to the joystick ports around the front of it if you see it you'll see it easily inside i've undone that and the other end of it is on the power board this main backboard on the inside and the back you sort of get, get your arm in your hand in there a little bit if it's easy to get out just pull it out now that wire there we're going to get rid of that completely so you can get rid of that there's um usually a bit of masking tape or, or sorry yeah, insulation tape holding the damn thing on which I'm just going to quickly snip off with my knife because I'm going to put a nice cable tie around that probably anyway so there's that wire there see on this one it's got two ends to it on your one maybe just one end and one end you can just snip it off off the main board because it's soldered to the main board that can go in the bin it's rubbish that's the problem not shielded cable so you get rid of that you pull out um, you can see it here, let me just put it up right again. So there's a, a red, blue and yellow cable just there. It's got the main board that one there, take it off. You can see these obviously. There's a yellow, green, orange and red connector as well. You just pull that off carefully. 
and also if you turn it this way around between the two boards the main power board and the cpu board here i don't know what color yours will be but there's a like shielded piece of wire here it's actually soldered onto a really heavy piece of solder join on the on the on the uh, cpu board so just unsolder one end to take it off so that both parts come apart and next thing we're going to be doing is taking some screws out there's one in the back by the cartridge port here there's one in the center there's two on the transformer and there's one on the right hand side of the back and one on the left hand side of the back so take all those screws out five screws in total three long ones and two short machine screws so when you take that out you can then oh, and also unplug the speaker It'll be either black and black like this one or black and yellow wires so you undo that from the main board so you take that out and then the two halves should separate like this but it's still connected to the main board here with these three wires you don't want to undo this but what you can do is just carefully set it on top here so it's not going to fall off be careful of that so you can sort of sit it on there carefully and then work on it So, the uh, first thing we need to do is we need to solder our new wire, which we're going to make in a second, onto two ports of the potentiometer, which is the on off and the volume control. We're going to solder straight to that rather than the points that are on the board from before. That's going to be neglected now. And then we're going to take um, a point on the motherboard, which has got five volts running to it, to go to the amp to power the amp. That's the three main things that's going to the amp. And the other end of the amp is the output, it's what we're going to snip the end of this um, speaker cable off and plug it into it to get the sound from the amp. I'll attempt to do this while the camera's in front of me. We need about six inches of wire-ish. We can always trim it down later on. If you do it longer, you can just trim it down. Now there's a thin uh, piece of red, which you want to use for the voltage from five volts to the little amp. Put the amp there. And you need some, many people say um, to use shielded cable or shielded wire for the actual signal. But what I'm going to do is just use some thicker insulated wire and it seems to work for me absolutely fine. I'm going to keep it roughly the same size as this fella here. So I'll just soupy snip that off. And then the ground wire, same size again, just black. I don't know what gauge wire it is actually I use. I never know the gauges, but you can see sort of how thin it is. It's reasonable quality copper wire. Same length as the other two-ish. That's that. What I want to do is, yeah, everyone should not do this, just snip some wires and tin the ends. Snippy snip. Snippy snip. If you haven't got yourself one of these excellent wire tri strippers, get one, they're absolutely brilliant. Better than those manual things. So what I'm going to use is the ground and the thicker red one, which is going to go to the front of that volume pot we talked about earlier, and then into, you can see on here, I don't get it focused, but on the end, um, sorry, the, the second one in from the right hand side, this one here, is going to be, it's actually marked up, it says in, so you're going to get the, the thick red wire to in, the black to one of the grounds on the left hand side, don't matter which one, and the VCC is going to be the thinner red wire, which goes to 5 volts to power it. And then this output here, got um, ground and out, that's going to go to the black wires on the speaker. And that's how it works. I'm just going to quickly uh, tin these up. You don't need to see me doing this. Now here's a close-up look at what we're going to be soldering to. So the thicker signal wire, I'm going to be soldering to this middle point of the pot you can see there there's three together one two three to find the white connector or where you took the cable out from there so the middle one's going to be the thick red connector wire one on the left is going to be ground the black wire there's actually a little point up here you can just see that there uh, it's very close to mark r329 it's a little point there and it's a tiny little point, it's a wire, and it holds, it takes uh, five volts, which is going to use the thinner red wire to go to VCC on the amp. So you can always check whether it's five volts, if it connects to these red cables here are five volts as well. So when you put your 
meter on continuity test on there and those wires, they should be because they're obviously the same connection. You can actually see on the tracks it is anyway. But if you just want to be certain, you don't need to take your five volts from there. You can take them other places, but that's where I took all three of these from. So I'm just going to quickly solder them up, let you have a look what they look like. Right, this is all soldered up now. Um, solder the points there. Get the wire out of the way a sec. Uh, you see the, the center point there is the signal, the red wire. On the left hand side is the black. Onto the pot there in the middle of the two joystick ports. You can even remove that white connector if you want. I haven't been bothered to move it because it's not going to be used now. And the red wire I said about comes from there, that point. And you can check that between these wires and that one make sure there's continuity that's a five volt which is the vc goes to vcc on the little amp your red wire goes to in and your black ground wire goes to either one of the grounds so that grounds a five volt and the signal and then you attach it all to your little amp i've attached the speaker cable just not snip the end off and attach that in the green cable clamps there what i'm doing in a second is mount it somewhere neatly perhaps on there and you can actually insulate all this and you can put, you put insulation tape around it, but I'm going to probably um, stick it on with some hot glue, maybe there, so it doesn't move around. It's not going to touch anything inside it. So I shall get that together and get it all put back together. I'll have a description of what bits I put in where and how I did it. I'll do that in a second. I'm going to assemble everything back together now. I've already put the screws in. So the two on the transformer are two long ones. Got a long one here, so partially put in, and a long one here as well. Now the other long one, you might get a bit confused with this, there's two points in the back on the right hand side here, and it's the one on the left, which is closer to the cable in the back of it, that is a long one, because the other one is goes in the back of the case. So put your long one in there. So that's the three longer screws. There's a short one right in the center here. Get the to get to. And one on the other side. You can see up through the red and white wires from this angle. So that's all that screwed back together. Now you've got to put your plugs back in now. So the red, blue, and yellow one goes in here and it goes one way around on the white connector. You've got the red orange, green and yellow one, and it goes one way around on the connector. And so the ones that were plugged into the main board we took out were the speaker, uh, sorry, the, the, the signal and the one that goes onto the main board. Don't need them anymore. Forget about those, don't bother plug them in, they're not here anymore. And the only other important one to do before we uh, put this somewhere nice and safe and attach it somewhere so it doesn't move around is just going to zoom in on this is that one there which is the, the ground plane to the main main cpu board there so i'm just going to solder that one in and then we'll uh we'll give it a quick test and here is the little lm386 amp module um, attached via a cable tie to the uh little guard there um, you might see, you notice, I've exchanged the wire I had on there for some shielded cable. Because it wasn't that good when I turned it on, but when I got the back on, I think you hear even less noise. So that's it on there. And when you undo this bit, there's a little screw at the back here to, to drill through and put this in. Make sure the machine is off and unplugged from the wall. Because that's where the, the mains goes into the brown and, and black, uh, brown and blue. AC voltage, it might be different from other countries, but that's where the AC voltage comes in. So make sure that's off. Before you do it, put your plastic cable tie on, screw it back down and then put it on. I'm gonna put the back on the machine now and test to see how less buzz it's got on it. Now here's a moment of truth. Uh, back on. Still a bit of buzz there. Hmm, what does it do with the shielded cable? Maybe this is because it's a later Vectrex system. It's got rid of a bit of the buzz, but not all of it. 
Um, I just want to play you another one I have, which I did for a friend of mine recently. You've got to hear the difference on that. Here's one I did earlier. This one is miles better. Tiny bit there. Much better. But still an improvement on my one anyway. Hope this has helped. One last thing um, I'm going to say before I get off is when you put the back back on, because that, that um, power PCB on the side there sort of moves around a little bit, you'll be very careful about lining up this brightness control. And um, what people can do is you get a plastic drinking straw, pop it over the top of the pot, and then line the thing up over the top of it. But what I normally do is just sort of line it up and get it in there. But make sure you don't damage that as you put it on. Don't squash it or anything. And also, when you put the, the back cover on, make sure it slots over the cartridge slot there as well. Um, and then just put your screws back in. Uh, two small machine screws up the top, one machine screw right in the centre by the power, and the two kind of like wood screws in the back, the longer ones on the sides. And that's it. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Um, comments in the comment box or if you think you know, it can make my other Vectrex even less of a buzz, give us a shout, because I'm not sure how to do it. That's the way I've done it anyway. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.